Hello, you amazing friends, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Boss Ladies Summit for September 2021. Please feel free to unmute right now and give the person next to you a round of applause. So just want to say welcome, welcome. Such a pleasure having you all with us. And um, I was going to say what a great one for you today. Now, be it you're on the live and thank you. We've got 18 of you winners live with us right now. And also, too, if you're watching the recording, which our recordings get seen um, hundreds and thousands of times. So I just want to say a big welcome and thank you having you um, having us. Now, today's theme is extra special. My name's Edward. So just want to say a big welcome. And I'll go through our lineup of heroic speakers. Today, we have got the amazing Tasia Valenza with us. Big wave to amazing Tasia. Tasia was just telling us um, off camera before about getting the Delta COVID virus before. So we'll come back to that. We've got amazing Agnes. Please wave to legendary Agnes. And Agnes has got a book coming out on Thursday, her children's book, which we're excited about. So Agnes, um, great to have you with us. We've got the extremely powerful, insightful and slightly dangerous Anya Lude Milliner. Big wave to Anya. There you go. Amazing leadership coach from the beautiful Queensland. And of course, as well, our other wonderful panelists today is our brand new heroic friend from Indiana, Master Coach Sonia. Big wave to Master Coach Sonia. And there you go. I love how you got Master Coach Sonia. It's a bit like Master Chief from Halo if you ever played that game. So there you go. We just need a bit of power armor for you when we got you there. But I just want to say a big welcome and welcome to our panel, um, our guests as well. Now, just let you know, if you are a guest on this, um, thank you for coming in. Um, we'll keep you on mute um, as the guest, but please use the chat. So please use the chat like to contribute to the discussion and also share your LinkedIn link. So please use the chat to not only contribute to the discussion, but also use it to network as well. So please use this as an opportunity to further support women's empowerment, which we all love, but also network and expand as well. And usually people come later on. So without further ado, I want to dive on in. And this topic is rock bottom, how to bounce back from rock bottom. Now I've got my own personal story in it, but that's not what's relevant. I want to explore with you winners what coming back from rock bottom is like from a women's empowerment point of view. So I'll do whatever I can to hide my own male biases because I want to hear what you amazing ladies and gentlemen think from a women's empowerment view. And just to open this discussion, discussion, I'm in a real Agnes mood today. I've had Agnes. Agnes has been in my head a lot lately. I don't know. Agnes must be putting out signals. She's just been in my head lately because I love Agnes. And Agnes, so good having you with us. And how are you, my friend? I'm fine, thank you. I'm cold. It's very cold here. I'm very well. Busy weekend. I'm dashing off immediately after this. I've got to go do something, but I have to be here for this hour. Thank you so much. And hi, everyone. Now, Agnes, we've spoken a lot about this off camera. You're an amazing leader and a powerhouse winner. And you don't mind if I start hitting you with all the difficult questions. Can I hit you with the questions? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good. There you go. And just remember, it's being recorded. Anything you do say can be used against you in a court of law. Just kidding. You'll be fine. Let's go. So number one, number one, when you hit, and, and we'll start with Agnes, and here's question one. Agnes, when you hit rock bottom, what did you do? Um. So, you know, I, I've been thinking about this the whole week, and uh, I was thinking, like, what, what can I share? What really got my heart to to say that this is really hitting bottom for me and I've thought about it professionally I can't really pinpoint anything much where it actually bothered me so much that I can categorize that as hitting rock bottom so what I thought um, that really really um, affected me personally emotionally and my physical being everything in me uh, coincidentally today is Father's Day was the death of my father that was the, the period of my life where I thought I would never live again at all. I thought I was going to, a piece of me was going to die with me when my father died. My father died um, a year after I finished high school and I had high hopes. I was applying for nursing school to go in London and I was just about to go and pay. And then he got sick and unexpectedly and then he died. And my life just got shattered. I had no idea how I was going. And I was young at the time, but I thought that was the end of me. So I, I went into, I didn't even know what depression at the time was. Uh, I just remember that I, I wasn't eating. I wasn't talking to anyone. I became paranoid. I used to speak to my father every night in the dream and dreams were so real. Like I would have a conversation the whole night with him. 
sometimes if there's background music, I would actually listen to him physically. I was so, so depressed that I, the only thing that I wanted to do was to find something that wasn't normal for me. So I decided to go with my grandmother who came for a funeral to go to the village. And for, I've got a few Africans here. You know, there's a big difference between living in the city and living in the village. So I decided to go and live three months with my grandmother because I just wanted something that wasn't different. I didn't want to feel me. So I wanted something that was different in my surrounding. So that was the darkest part of my life that I would actually think of. And after three months, I had gathered my thoughts around. I told my mom that, you know, I need to, to, to start living again. And I came back to the city and my mom was able to find me employment. That's how I sort of started my life all over again, went back to school. And uh, years later, here I am. I'm in Australia after 27 years because it was 27 years on the 22nd of August since it's passed. So that was the only thing that I could think of. Professionally, I've always been able to stand up for myself. I don't really, really hit bottom, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a long story, but I'll leave it there. Oh, wow. And so you went on a real pilgrimage in this uh, tragedy, didn't you? Real pilgrimage. Yeah, yeah, I could call it that way. That was the only way. That was the only thing I could uh, think of. I would only cope to be a different person where no one who knew me and I had to think how life was going to be with, with uh, without the, the first love of my life, who was my father. Wow. Wow. Agnes, this is deep. We're going to come back to you. Can we give a round of applause to Agnes? And Agnes, that's deep. And thank you for your rawness. Now, I want to bounce over to the amazing uh, Tasia Valenza. Tasia um, has been busy for the past few months with her kids going off to university and college and um, only learned recently in America. That's a real rite of passage. So I just want to say, Tasia, congratulations to you again. Please unmute and say hello. Hi, everyone. Again, it's delightful. We were chatting it up. But yes, Edward, you know, I love coming to this Empowerment Women's Summit, Lady Bosses. and uh, But I have uh, been going through a a big transition in my life because I have twins uh, literally going off to college and one is already gone and then the next one's going and I have one left at home but huge change of life and um, in regards to uh, being present I've been trying to be present for them and so I've had to uh, kind of contract a little bit which I think is something that we all as women sometimes uh, can remember to do because so often we are giving 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 and overextending ourselves and we then don't have enough time to do the things that we really need to do or that we need to take care of ourselves or of our families or because we, we say yes too much. So um, uh, I love to talk about the art of knowing. I was just talking to a client today, the art of knowing, which is I'd love to, but I can't. Uh, yeah. So maybe I can when I, I do. So I've been saying a lot of no's recently, which is why I haven't been here, but I'm so delighted to say yes. Oh. And in terms of... Um, and just on that note too, you've, you're, we're talking about this off camera. Um, in all fairness, you also got the the uh, COVID virus Delta variant too. So I think you got good excuses. You got kids going to university, and you got and you conquered uh, COVID Delta. So congratulations for that. Yeah, so I was very lucky that it was a very mild case, but it did. You know, we did have to quarantine, and that was during that period, and I had to take care of my daughter. So. That was one more piece of it, but uh, but I would love to be able to share in terms of a rock bottom because I think that's something that this is what this is about, and uh, I definitely did experience this early on in my life and uh, my career. Actually, I, you know, there's all levels of rock bottom, but I was uh, I was uh, on a soap opera, and when I was 17, 16 to 19, and I was living a very glamorous sort of life on all my children, and um, at the same time, I was very self destructive, very um, deeply insecure while I was doing this. And so at the same time that things looked so great, uh, I was kind of messed up inside and, you know, bulimic and definitely not um, treating myself well because at, at the core level, I didn't really feel I was worthy of all this success I was getting. And so ultimately I- Let's jump in there, Tasia. Um, yeah. and, and you said something that is actually one of the things. So you said you weren't worthy of the success- can, yeah. can I just dig on that one a little bit? Can you unpack that one a bit more? Because that's actually one of our core themes today, which you, you're, a, you're a master at stumbling onto the core themes before I even mention them, please. <laughs> well, you know, I work with a lot of clients on this idea of um, a, a confidence coach on top of um, being a voice of artist and a voice of coach. But uh, confidence, of course, truly and self-esteem is an inside job. 
And I can't tell you how many times when I'm exploring with them, um, not only the roles we play, the thoughts we speak out loud, but the thoughts in our head is at the core level, at some level we don't feel worthy in some capacity. And for me growing up, I, I, had, I was a child of divorce. My parents were not well and my father was always away and there was, you know, my mother was very depressed. And so I grew up thinking I wasn't enough because if I had been enough, they would be together. I would have felt loved. There would have been so many variables. So that definitely was always very much a part of my subconscious. So even though I had all the success being on this very successful soap opera um, and, you know, being a glamorous actress inside, I felt like I wasn't enough. I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't tall enough. I wasn't thin enough. There were so many enoughs especially when you're on camera, you know, you're, 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 you're all the glamorous, fabulous stars and you're inside your, you're in your head, like how did I get here? So I think that's a universal thought. And so with that, I um, literally self-destructed where I wasn't professional. I kept messing up and got let go. I got let go of, a, of, of my contract. I had just been signed for, and a soap opera, you could be let go every 16 weeks mm -hmm. through the storylines, but you sign on for two years. So I just signed on and six months later, unexpectedly, now I know why, of course, they let me go. And so I really hit rock bottom because I was, I hadn't saved my money. I was 19. I thought the world was my oyster, even though I kept self-destructing. And I really had to um, reevaluate my life. I went into an OA program, which is Overeaters Anonymous. So I started really recognizing that I could not do this alone. I wanted to connect to a higher power. And that truly helped me. I went to therapy uh, to again, explore my, uh, this unconscious desire that I was, you know, that I would never be enough. So I really started in the self-help. My father was very supportive of this. He, he said, you know, he really wanted me to get this help. And so even in the eighties, which was, you know, therapy wasn't known as much or people, you know, hit it. Mental wellness became my mandate. And so I've been on that exploration ever since. I still go to therapy years later. I still work on my mindset all the time. I love teaching other people the same skills, but I truly, truly believe uh, that understanding that our programming is zero to seven and we carry so much of it. It becomes the hard drive of our brains. And most of us are operating on what I like a metaphor of a computer on 40 year old computers and we need a software update. Yeah. We need a software update. And the yeah. software update is recognizing that we are enough and then affirming it over and over and over again and recognizing that we're not our thoughts. So I had to start recognizing that the thoughts in my head of not being enough are my mother's and my father's and my grandmother's and all the people that had inadvertently told me that through their own insecurities. And so I've been ever becoming aware of my thoughts and then recognizing them that this is not me. Does this serve me? Does this serve my ability? And if not, how can I reprogram those thoughts through affirmations, through meditation, through self-exploration, through therapy, through mind, mindful coaches, and, and really recognizing that this is an ongoing thing. So I'm still working on myself years and years later, but I can tell you that at a deep core level, I love myself very much. And I continuously tell myself that so I can continue this journey. So I hope that's helpful. And I'm sure there's much more to explore, but I'd love to, to pass the mic. Oh, that's incredible. And just reacting to some of the comments, we've got the amazing Leanne Wakeling says, lovely, lovely, lovely to hear this. It's our imprint period where children have zero filters. So I couldn't agree with you more. That zero to seven, absolutely crazy. And um, Eileen Avard came in and says, Tasia, we love this. Using a 40-year-old PC to process our current thinking. And I can relate to this because um, I'm quite a PC guy. Every week, Windows 10 does an update. And going on Tasia's logic, if my PC updates every week, then shouldn't we update every week? So I couldn't agree with you more on that, Tasia. And, other rea and Leanne also says, well, Leanne Wakeling is a relationship coach and parenting mentor, and she's talking about this type of work. So power to you, Leanne. I've known Leanne for years. Amazing lady. And also, too, we've got Camilla on the line, and she acknowledges your vulnerability. So Camilla, great having you with us. 
And we've got Christine Flores as well. So I was just going to say a big thank you. If you've been here from the start, thank you. If you've just come in or watching the recording, please use the chat network and contribute to the discussion. And Tasia, we absolutely love what you're about. Now we're going to bounce over to Anya and then Master Coach Sonia. But Anya, um, Anya and I go back many years. Anya is a very, I like to say she is a delightfully helpful yet dangerous lady. And I love her. And, and obviously I mean danger in a very, very positive extremely dangerous uh, context. And she's an amazing leadership coach and NLP master. And Anya, so good having you with us. How are you? Good morning, Ed. And uh, good morning and good evening. Good afternoon, everyone, <laughs> wherever you are. Yes, I'm well. Thank you. How are you going? Oh. Ed, great to, uh, great to be here. Always great to be here. I know. And just referencing where you are. So you're in um, Australia yeah. and you're in the beautiful Brisbane, which is basically, uh, I always say Brisbane's like Florida and New York stuck together is my best analogy for it. And um, yes. And I just want to say, Anya, um, I want to ask you that tricky question. I want to ask you about your rock bottom experience. What did you do when you hit rock bottom? Please tell us everything. Uh, I'll share as much as I can. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Well, um, everyone, I think what T uh, Tessia and Agnes were talking about is about um, dealing with um, self-esteem um, for Tessia. And for Agnes, it was dealing with uh, something that she couldn't control, the death of someone that was truly close to her and someone she loved and I think here we're talking about resilience and of course, and it's of, often associated with some sense of loss, either loss of something within us or lo external loss. So oh, I certainly went through my experiences before uh, this meeting and uh, remembered what I lost, uh, whether it's because, you know, I had something to contribute to it or something I couldn't control. And certainly uh, what came up for me was loss of um important relationship also loss financial loss at some stage and I thought how did I deal with it well at some stages I didn't do, deal with it that well and um yeah, can I jump in there yeah. right and, yes. and and I love your rawness by the way and this is coming from a guy who's been very self-destructive when you said you didn't deal with it well can I ask you about some of the negative things that you did if you don't mind me asking that question uh well, I guess it was more, um, it's again, it's probably self-destructive thing. It would be a self-doubt and um, disliking myself. Um, that's going back to self-worth and constantly going back to scenarios, what I should have done, what I shouldn't have done, what if I've done that, what if I didn't do that. So you end up uh, feeling stuck and not uh, moving forward. So you constantly almost like rewind that tape in your head, you know, and thinking, oh, but maybe I should have, you know, done this or that. And even if it was something that I couldn't control, but I thought that I could. So, for example, you know, if it was um, a loss of a job or it's a loss of someone dear as well, I had, um, I dealt with deaths of my stepfather and my father. So that's something I couldn't control. But still, you know, in your head, you start going through these scenarios. So it's, uh, I guess, the what, um, it's more of a self-stuckness, you know, that you don't move forward, that you don't do anything, and you constantly beat yourself up. And um, sometimes it feels like it's not going to, it's never going to end. Yeah. So one of the ways, I guess, uh, what I came up with, uh, one of the ways to deal with it was first to, to give yourself space for healing, really. We always want to jump and move on and quickly proceed to something else, yet we need that space to heal, and healing can take a little bit of time. Also, it means uh, letting go of something, surrendering, and uh, forgiving yourself. And also forgiving others, no, no matter the circumstances, because there's a lot of power in forgiveness. And once we truly, you know, forgive and moving on from the past, we regain a lot of power. So I'd say first, I guess, give yourself space to heal. 
to accept yourself, to love yourself, because healing is about self-care, as Tessia said earlier. And then I think there's a lot of power in decision. And decision is our choice. And we make the decision whether we want to move forward or whether we want to stay stuck. Well said, Anya. As I've always said, you are dangerous and I love it, Anya. Can we give Anya a round of applause? Anya, thank you. Okay. And uh, we'll be coming back to you, Anya. Don't you worry about that. And just reacting to the comments. Keep the comments coming again. Please network and contribute to the discussion. Uh, Tasia, we love your work. Leanne Wakeling says, um, reacting to uh, Chris Miller. Before we'll go back, Chris Miller made an interesting point. And I'll read this out for Chris Miller. Just so you know, Chris Miller um, and I go way back. And Chris Miller is also a police veteran as well. So thank you for your service. Um, We love our police and military. So I'm Chris Miller. I hit rock bottom in COVID between February and March 2020. I thought my 90-year-old father would certainly die badly. He's celebrating Father's Day today. And it's happy Father's Day, including me. There you go. There's my evidence on the wall behind me. There you go. I lost a six-figure contract and thought I should close up my business. And as... Chris tells her story. She became a global speaker and to this day she's absolutely winning. So power to you, Chris. I want to give a round of applause to um, good old Chris Miller and that's incredible. And um, Leanne reacting to Chris said, that's so wonderful, Chris. Many people have been able to embrace the global opportunities and have come out of the shift in attitudes. There you go. You guys are the best audience because you already know where it's going and I love it. So keep the contributions going. If you just come in, a big welcome. Now, I want to bounce over to Master Coach Sonia. Um, I've only just met Master Coach Sonia recently, but she's one of those people that you meet just for 10 minutes and you feel like you've known her since you were in uh, primary school. And uh, Master Coach Sonia, it's so good having you with us. And how have you been? How's life in beautiful Indiana? Well, it's been raining pretty hard today. Um, I think from the weather, from the hurricane coming, everything's coming up, but it's been really good. Um, I'm just thankful that um, I'm I'm here breathing <laughs> and have, have a a great husband and son and and my fur baby Keila. But um, I um, I'll go ahead and get started because my story is a little bit longer. And please tell us everything, um, Sonia. Your rock bottom experience. Um, back in 2012, end of uh, 2012, I graduated from. Um, grad school with my master's MBA in marketing. And I was real excited because I had just started a new job in August of 2012. And, and when I was, it was an HR and that was what my undergrad's in. And, and when I was in this, this company, it was like, I was working with a group of people who were very narcissistic, um, who were bullies and, and I just felt like I couldn't win no matter what I did. And, and so in February, I'd only been there maybe eight months. Well, um, I came in one day and I got laid off and then, um, I had just moved from, I lived in Nashville, Tennessee. I had just moved from Nashville, south about 30 miles to the expensive area where all the stars and everybody lives which was expensive for me to live and so i had i was like how am i going to get out of this apartment um but i had no choice because then i became homeless and then i had uh, a friend that turned into a stalker and then on top of that my former fiance got cancer and um, I was really devastated by that. And then, um, I was, you know, not sure what I was going to do because my, the company I was working for, they wouldn't pay my unemployment. So I had to appeal and it took three months for them to pay me. And, and so I had to end up moving to Indiana from Tennessee and uh, moved in with my mom in my 40s, which was very humble pie. And it was hard, you know, moving away from everybody I knew, but all my family was in Indiana. And so when I moved up to Indiana, my health had basically started 
um, taking a toll and I didn't know what was wrong. I, my hair started falling out. My eyesight started going and I was in a lot of pain and stress and uh, I couldn't find a job. It took me like 18 months, but I was just so depressed. And then my son was in the Philippines on his mission, half a world away. And, you know, I missed him so bad. It was like two years. And I knew exactly when the earthquake hit. And that was in July of 2013. And he was supposed to come home in that month. So I was worried to death. And so I had all of these things happen from February to July. And then um, I just, I felt like I was weathering the storm of my life and all this trauma, one thing after another. And I just, what helped me get through that was my dog, Roxy, who was, she was my rock. She was a boxer, uh, Brindle, and she was there with me. She, she and I were like gypsies because we moved around and, and she was always there with me. And so one night I got down on my knees and I prayed and I asked God to help me because I said, you know, I, I just felt like I was weathering in the storm and I felt like I was in a life raft and that I was sinking and I was going to the bottom of the ocean and that everything was cr- crashing in on me and I couldn't see my lighthouse anymore. And I just felt like I was lights out and, and I just asked God, please send me a sign. And so that very next day, um, coming down the sidewalk, were three very special people who came in. I mean, I, when I saw them, I opened the door and my, I made a promise to my son that I had the missionaries teach me and they did, but it was just like, they saved my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, I still am really close to those three women. Um, but they helped me get my life back on track. And, and then, you know, so when the my, three wise women, not the, the not the three yeah. wise men, the three wise women. I like it. Three yeah. wise women. <laughs> so, you know, um, and you know, I, I just, that year, I can't even really, I'm so glad that year ended, but on December 29th, my fiance had died and it was the coldest, coldest year it had been in probably a hundred years. It got down to, uh, 30 below zero and it was like that for like a month and it it snowed from december 4th to april 4th every single day and i was stranded in tennessee because i had to go back down there to his funeral and i wouldn't wish that on anybody but i had so many things happen at once that it took me a while and 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 a bit of trivia for you um you know why there was three people don't you So in divine providence, um, the Lord always works in lots of three, the Holy Trinity. So three is a magic number. So whatever stuff happens, it always happens in three. That's divine providence. So I'll tell you what, your prayers are very spot on, uh, that God's definitely tuned into you, Sonia. Mm, Yeah. I wasn't sure which story to tell because that, that, you know, I'm a be your own hero coach, and that was because two years ago, I almost died of a heart attack. And that was because of employers being bullied to me. And when I came home from the cardiac ER that night, I was in my bathroom and I was like, I was, I was like, God, who's going to help take care of me. Who's going to help protect me. And the word hero popped into my head. And when that word did, I was like, who's going to be my hero? What do you mean? Yeah. And, yeah. and I, and I stood up and I was like, Sonia, you're going to be your own hero. Oh, and so that's, that's my mission in life. I want to help others be their own hero. Oh my God. Sonia, that was deep. We're going to come back to you. Amazing round of applause and deep Sonia. There you go. Definitely some divine providence there and a big thank you. And I just want to say, if you just come in, keep the discussion going. I was going to react to the comments. Christine Flores says, thank you for your vulnerability, Sonia. Your journey is inspiring. And I was just going to add to that, Sonia, you're immortal, which means, um, Human weapons can't kill you. So there you go. You're completely immortal, obviously. So you've definitely got divine protection. Taja says, very powerful, be your own hero. Here, here. Leanne Wakeling says, we have to be our own hero. Thank you. 
Cami acknowledges your winning and I was going to say it is amazing. So um, there you go. And Eileen, Eileen Avard earlier talks about giving a space to heal. So keep the discussion going. Also, please use this as an opportunity to connect and network as well. So I just want to say a deep thank you. Now I want to bounce back to the amazing Agnes. And Agnes, I just want to say, what are your reactions to the amazing things that we've heard? What are your thoughts and feelings, Agnes? Uh, so just so inspiring, empowering uh, at the same time. I I just feel like uh, going through all, all my life, all these years, I would have heard such stories from these beautiful women because I think we see ourselves in other people's struggles, in other people's, uh, you know, coming back from such experiences. And uh, you, you just feel that, you know, if, uh, if she can do it, maybe I can also do it. And maybe you can also reach out and just see, like, how did you do it? So it's just uh, empowering to just see, like, all the experiences that um, uh, Sonia has, has talked about and Anya. And uh, you just feel you can actually, no matter how difficult the situation you are in, at the end of the day, you can pick yourself up. So it's just, um, you know, inspiring to hear. Oh, incredible. Now, Agnes, I want to ask you, how does coming back, uh, coming back from rock bottom differ for women compared to men? Ah, uh, that's a very good question. And, you know, I, I was thinking about this question, that how am I going to tackle this question? And then I remembered, I think the question we had, was it last, last month uh, in terms of uh, how we differ as uh, men and women? For me, I feel women, we are so emotional. <laughs> and once we, we, we are hit, we are hit. Everyone around us will see it, will be crying. And it depends on how you are, you are actually. Other people cry, other people eat, other people sleep. For men, I feel you, you, you don't show emotions. You just feel like you are contained, but you are burning inside and you don't want to talk. That's the difference about women. I gave you an example, Edward, when we had the mental health forum on behalf of our organization, I created this lovely group. I'm planning. This is what we are going to do. I'm the only woman there and the men were mute. No one said anything. Yeah. I was like, if it was women here, by now you'd have known the name of my dog. You'd have known my kids and you'll be talking about this because that's what we do, women. We talk, we relate. If if um, you meet me today, tomorrow will be my best friend. But for men, you keep it to yourself. And for women, seriously, at the time, I was looking at my brother when my father died. He was playing soccer with his friends. You know, life goes on. I was sobbing my eyes out like, that's it. That's the end of my world. Because I never saw, like, how can I leave a world without my father? How can I leave? My mom that time was a civil servant, like in the public system. How is she going to take care of six kids? You know, all those things, emotions come in. And the more you think about it, the more depressed you become. But for men, it's seriously different. I have a child who has uh, who had a chronic illness. Thank God. We went through a period of uh, uh, 10 years. We were in and out of hospital. And uh, we decided to accept the clinical trial. She underwent a bone marrow transplant. For me, I used to cry every day. I would beat myself. I was crying. Then I was just scared of the unknown. I was sitting there in front of the mirror like, why are you crying? Because I was just so emotional. I was afraid of what was going to happen. This was a very risky procedure I was going to go through. And I didn't know how to react. With my husband, he was content. He was okay. And then after all the period when we went through, everything was successful. And then one time he told me a story that I was so um, emotional one day, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to speak to you or the kids. So he drove. So for those who live in Craigieburn, uh, who live in Melbourne, I live in Craigieburn. There's a place called um, uh, Frankston. It's almost maybe an hour or so from Craigieburn to Frankston. He went to what we call healing rooms for Christians in this, in this room. You know what healing rooms are? In every part of the world, if you Google uh, healingrooms.com, there's a place where you can go and just pray for, you know, for whatever it is. Every weekend, there's a place, even here in, in Australia, in Melbourne, there are places every time. So he drove to, to, foot to Frankston because he just wanted to, he just couldn't contain himself. And he found these random people and they prayed and he cried, but he couldn't show us to, to us as a family because 
Men want to be in control. You want to, to lead. You want to be content. But for women, we'll be eating ice cream. We'll be crying. And you'll be doing that because our emotions are expressed out of the... And, and that's just the way we are formed. There's nothing we can do about it. Some, some, men, some women might try to be like men, but I tell you the majority of women I know in my life, when we are down, we are down. And everyone will see, will hear it, will be texting, will be crying, will be, you know. And when you are happy, we are happy. That's just the way we are. So that's how we, we are different from, from, from men, Edward. Oh, just, just amazing. And I love your experience. And you know what I find amazing about you, Agnes, is that, and I've seen it, I've seen you, you have such an ability to bounce back quickly. You might cry and be depressed, then 10 minutes later, you're back in the fight. So I've got to say, um, you're, you're, like, you're like female Wolverine. Your regeneration is completely insane, is all I can say. That's just the way life is. I, I tell you, like, that's why I, I actually had to think about what story can I share that really, really affected me. There's some things that I've gone through in my career life that I, I would cry about it, but it doesn't really affect me to the core, where I would call that, you know, but the experience of my father was one of the things that I'll never have to forget, forget in my life because that really, really affected me. In other areas of life, especially now that I've met this community with you, Edward, I've seen so many women doing so many things and so many stories. Um, Sonia, I think I've heard Sonia's story before. And uh, you just feel that, you know, men, women go through a lot of things in life and we bounce back. No matter what it is, we just feel like, you know, I have to pick, I have to pick myself up. I, I can get help. And because so many experienced women and men in our community where you can just say, I'm just going to send a LinkedIn message to, to Sonia, to Annette, to Edward, to Lassie. What can I do about this situation? And we, we really bounce back. Career-wise for me, I'll tell you, I, I just have to pick myself up because I feel every time losing is not an option, especially if you have people that want to bring you down, you just want to wake hard and just you know say that I can do this. So that's me. Thank you. Beautiful. Can we give, let's give love to Agnes. I'm going to non-applause slash love. Oh, love and applause. There you go. Agnes, that was deep. Love it. So just want to react to the comments. Keep the comments coming and make sure you connect with each other. So um, please connect on LinkedIn. Eileen Avard um, is acknowledging the amazingness of Julia. Um, Master coach Sonia talks about the bullying and uh, toxicity she went through. And also uh, Sonia's been posting about that a lot as well. And uh, Sonia, make sure you link, share your LinkedIn link as well. Um, and Tasia makes a good point. This is totally me. Men compartmentalize and women feel everything. Men also by nature feel pressure to be strong and stoic. And exactly, exactly. Um, I know this is, I'm very well aware this is for women's empowerment, but just talking as a man very quickly, I've been trained from day one. Um, in Australia, our capital is called Canberra. So in Australia, our capital is not Washington, D.C., it's, it's Canberra. And, um, and I worked in Canberra. In Canberra, you're taught to do the nothing to see here, everything is fine sort of routine. So um, Taja totally gets that. So like, like a politician or like when you work for the government, you're taught that line. And um, again, come up mentalization. That's what I love about women. Um, you guys actually tell the truth. Us men lie and hide everything. So we could be missing an arm and everything's fine. So that's why I love women so much. Um, Pyle, Pyle's with us. Pyle is acknowledging Agnes and Pyle, we absolutely love you. Um, Christine Flores is acknowledging the power and Lynette is acknowledging the strength of Agnes and I couldn't agree with it more. And um, there you go. And uh, Leanne's made some great points about healing. So keep the comments coming and the absolute power and strength. And we're going to bounce over to the legendary... Tasia Valencia. Tasia, so good having you with us. Um, what are your thoughts and feelings and reactions to what you've heard today, Tasia? Well, I've laughed a lot and I appreciate uh, Agnes, especially with uh, <laughs> the ice cream and the emotions and we know each other's dogs, you know. There's so many variables that come into play. And I, I do, I, I'm, a, I'm a behaviorist because I'm an actress and I'm a voiceover actor and because I'm a coach, I, I really love studying behavior and humans. And uh, so I've read so many books, um, understanding, trying to understand the differences between men and women. So it becomes something that I can understand more from, there's so much more science. 
And there's some wonderful ones, uh, including, and I'm just going to throw them out there, Daniel G. Amen's um, The Power of the Female Brain, explaining the female brain versus the male brain. You know, we used to have men are from Mars, women are from Venus, but, uh, which was great, but now we have the science to back it up and really understanding how women's brains are, are you know, there's gray matter versus white matter. And for men, the, the gray matter is very succinct they are able to compartmentalize because of the way uh their brains are literally made and ours have so much more uh, reactions going on where the emotions filter in and one of the best analogies that came out was you could have um a, the dishwasher break and you have the man standing there and the white the woman standing there. the man says ah oh, it's broken should i get a wrench or call the plumber uh, ours broke a few weeks ago so you're talking to the right guy continue yeah. Woman standing there. Oh my God, that is a full dishwasher. It's 11 p.m. at night. I asked him a week ago to get it fixed. I cannot believe it. I have women coming over tomorrow. I have to clean the dishes. I am exhausted. My mother told me not to marry him. Cut back to man. Mm. Maybe I'll get the wrench. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the women's brains we are literally wired differently and it's not that it's the man's fault it's not that it's the women's fault it's the more that we can understand how the process works the more we can speak to that and there's also a wonderful video called it's not about the nail if everyone's familiar with that it's about you know again men by nature they want to fix that is their they're wired for that we are still biological beings how evolved we've become in the 2020s uh, is not the wiring that men still need to hunt. They still need to provide. It's the biology says that women need to, we need to commune so we can uh, keep each other alive back at the cave with our babies. So, so much of, so there's wonderful books. So the more you want to understand the other sex, the more it will help you to speak their language and understand them. It makes for much better relationships. Um, the other book that I love, and I'll just throw it out there, are um, why men need, uh, why men have don't have a clue, and women need more shoes. The Pieces. These are so social psychologists. They're married couple. They explain the differences, how the brain works, and it really. And then why men need sex, and women like to cuddle. These are both fantastic books about recognizing the differences, honoring the differences. And then being able to commun communicate much more effectively. So women, we, we, we have 10,000 words a day or more. Men, they cap out at around 4,000. So when my husband says to me, too many words, I get it now. I don't feel so, I don't feel so insulted. So then he says, call your girlfriend. So, you know, now I know he does the best he can. And then sometimes I say to him, please don't try to fix it. Just tell me you understand me and give me a hug. So it's really, <laughs> it's really the understanding and then knowing how we can care for ourselves by communing with our women when we need our, our special girlfriends and our those that we love. And then, you know, asking our husbands to, to appreciate what we need to have them understand us and at the same time to respect and understand that they too biologically need us to honor the, the where their, their brains are. So that's what I want to share that so much of it is biology and understanding that gives us so much more uh, ability to have humor, love each other and adapt. And Edward, I don't know if that story resonated with uh, oh. last he received it. What, what was that? Was that spot on? Oh, the spot on. Well, uh, where, she, where she's saying this, um, both Lassie, myself and our children, we're very gendered. I'm very masculine. She's very feminine. So you just basically described our whole relationship just then publicly. And um, and just on that note, I uh, I don't mean to be controversial, but I need to bring this up. I, and I'm saying this not just, I'm just not reacting to you, Tasha, I'm reacting this generally. I find it very frustrating. And I, and I actually think this is quite sexist how uh, you get a lot of notions these days, especially more on Twitter and that sort of thing. That's constantly forcing women to act like men. I don't know if you find that frustrating, but it's sort of like as a woman, you can't feel stuff. You've got to be a CEO. You've got to have five children. You've got to go to the gym five times a week. I think it's expectation sexism. In fact, I'd love to hear your reaction on that one, Tasia, because I know you're quite savvy on these areas. But what do you think of expectation sexism? Because you are touching on that and what you're saying, uh, Tasia. In regards that we're supposed to be super women? Is, 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 yeah, it's sort of like women are supposed to be, you know, invulnerable. They're supposed to think like men, think like women. They've got to be compassionate. They've got to be tough. They've got to have five kids and they've got to be CEOs. I'm seeing a lot of this expectation sexism now. What's your reaction to that? 
You know, I can only address what I, my own experience that I, I, I definitely have noticed that we're having more conversations that this is an impossibility mm -hmm. to be able to do all of this uh, and to keep up with this, this notion that we're, that we're able to, you know, uh, in the 1980s, I can bring on the bacon and fry it up in the pan. This was an old commercial. Uh, but I, I, I don't know that this is something that, even if this is going on, that we should have to live up to in terms of keeping that uh, invulnerable, we can do everything. And I think that's where so much of self-care needs to come in. Again, this ability to understand that um, we need to fill our cups up first so that it overflows and then we have so much more to give. And women, uh, I'll give the, the, the best one that I can that Dr. Oz said once and then I'll pass the mic, um, which he, you know, Dr. Oz, his audience is mostly women. And he said, look, ladies, I'm a heart surgeon. I have worked on thousands of hearts over time. The heart is the organ that feeds itself first before any other organ in the body, before the kidneys, before the liver, the heart, the ventricles, it all has to run through. He said, ladies, who is the heart of the home? And all the ladies, 300 ladies, raise their hand, it goes, goes, case. Okay. okay. Ladies, how many of you feed yourselves mm. first? The answer was zero, right? Zero. Well, it was like two people. He goes, yeah, ladies, zero. zero. I would be, you would be a dead body. <laughs> You must feed yourselves first emotionally, whether that's taking 10 minutes a day for yourself to do nothing but to guard, but, but recognize that feeding yourself and only having the crumbs left doesn't serve your family, doesn't serve yourself, and doesn't ultimately have you be a healthy, vibrant human being, which your family needs you to be. So I've always stuck with that metaphor that the heart feeds itself first. And especially if you have children, especially daughters, they model after you, right? They mm -hmm. model after you. So I, I, I believe that we can recognize that we must be our strength, our strong selves, but that that must come through self-care. And it also has to, we have to know our boundaries when we've overextended ourselves and dial it back and dial it back and be able to say, I'd like to, but I'm overextended right now. And I must say no for now. The art of N-O-I-N-G, knowing. So that's my take on it. I don't know if that's answered the question, but I hope that metaphor from Dr. Oz is helpful. I think it's legendary. Can we show Tasha maximum love? There you go. There's legendary. And um, again, keep the discussions going. If you've just come in, a big thank you. And thank you for watching the recording as well. Uh, I'm just going to go through a few reactions. And again, please react and connect on LinkedIn as well. So um, Leanne Wakeling says, I like the flight analogy. We must put our own mask before helping our children. Here, here, Leanne Wakeling. Uh, Justine Cox says, emotions make people feel uncomfortable. Even some women, uh, so many people avoid it. For some reason, as leaders, what we need to do is we need to hold the space so people can process their emotions. Here, here, Justine Cox. Camilla uh, Wallensett has come in, acknowledging Leanne and the strength that she does and acknowledging Tasia's uh, reaction, which is good. And also, too, as well, we've got some great contributions um, coming in as well. And we've got a great one from Lynette, actually. There is a reason God took a rib from Adam and made Eve. I've stumbled the queens of the Bible, and Esther is my favourite. Men and women coexist together, and we need to coexist. And competition and more can be quite destructive. And I agree with you. And I think, you know, um, and that's, I think it's, and this is, again, I wanna, I'm not, I don't want to throw my own bias, uh, biases in, but these are one of the key things. Um, and also, too, just a quick one. Um, Agnes does have to leave at 8 a.m. today. So what we're going to do, if it's all right, Anya, we're just going to bounce back to Agnes for the moment, then we'll bounce back to you um, because, um, yeah, because that's in six minutes' time. So don't go anywhere. Um, Anya, we're going to bounce back to you, Agnes, because I absolutely respect that. And we will be going a bit over time, so we'll get you in there. Agnes, there is six minutes of your time left. Um, how, I just want you to say um, any reactions or thoughts to any other things that have come up for you. Oh, very, very interesting. Tasia, I'm, I'm, I'm glad this is being recorded. I'll go and look for those books. I need to understand the men's brain sometimes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, well, very interesting topic, to, to be honest. Um, again, you just bring out the best in us, uh, Edward. So um, 
yeah, I think that's all I, I've, I've, I've got to add at the moment. It's a very interesting topic and uh, you, it's good sometimes to actually recognize our vulnerability. And this is what most of us have done here and how we've actually grown from that, how we've bounced back is, is, is amazing to, to hear from all these different women. So it's been lovely to be part of this. And uh, I'm glad always you record these sessions when, when I'm sitting in my car sometime I can look at it and uh, just listen and be inspired over and over again. Oh, now, just before you go, and I know you've got to run and thank you again for um, putting this in today. Um, what are your closing thoughts on helping women bounce back from rock bottom? I think for women out there, just listening to different women on this platform just gives us assurance that no matter what you are facing in life, you will definitely come back. You will definitely bounce back. It may seem like it's the end of the world. For me, honestly, I didn't actually know how I was going to survive. I know listening to Sonia's story, Tasha, Anya, and others all the, in, the, in the chat box here, we go through periods of lives where we feel that, see, this is the end of me, but you find the, the purpose. I, I always feel every one of us on this earth has got a purpose in life. And it takes things like going through the, the worst situation in your life to actually recognize that, you know, I was being taught a lesson by the higher being for me to find my purpose. So sometimes the things we go through, I deliberate move by God. And I'm sorry for anyone who's not a Christian. I'm a strong Christian who feels yeah. everything that I go through is as a, as a reason, has a purpose. An example I've talked about over and over again, I'll be, you know, um, launching my book next week mm. when um all because of my daughter having a condition that i thought you know for over 30 years i didn't know what hospital was i had no idea what going through hospital situations i'm one person who was pregnant who left work at 5 p.m gave birth at night came back home that was me for the four kids that i had until our third child was diagnosed with a chronic illness at the time i thought that was the end of us i, I didn't know what to think but there was a reason I feel there was a reason in that God used, had to use me and my family to do what we do now to raise awareness about a condition that's considered rare in this country. So I feel every one of us, whatever we go through, no, no matter how bad the situation is, there's a purpose sometimes, not always, but I feel most of the time there's a lesson in whatever we go through and we do bounce back. We learn from that. And anyone who's going through a tough uh, situation right now, or whenever in future, just know that you will bounce back and you learn from it and you do better next time. That's just, my, I think, um, my thinking about this. And thank you, Edward, to actually, you know, make us remember and recognize that there will be dark times, but we'll definitely, definitely get on the other side. Oh, here, here. Agnes, thank you. We're going to let you go now, but thank you for today. Can we give Agnes a round of applause? As Thank she, you so uh, much, everyone. I'll, I'll, I'll listen to this at, at the end, and I can't wait to listen to the rest of the, the contributions. I have to leave. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Well, we we'll love your work, Agnes. And um, we're going to bounce over to Anya in just a moment. I'm just going to go through a few reactions and keep the conversation going. A great one from um, Leanne talking about how she helps people build emotional intimacy. I love it. And believe me, I uh, have many gaps in my own emotional resilience. And Julie Watson makes a good point. As women, we can now pave the way in our own style. We don't need to wear a dark suit to be good CEO. Here, here. And, and, I, and I guess the implication is you don't need to imitate men to win. And I couldn't agree with that one more. Um, and Julie also adds to it, we need a balance between compassion and courage, equalizing and leadership. And I love that one. And a great share from Leanne Wakeling that got my attention. I feel somewhat of an alien in this conversation. I was brought up mostly by my dad and I have a strong masculine bent. Um, and however, it's created a challenge of nature versus nurture, but later in life, couldn't agree with you more. And Leonette has made a good point. As leaders are built and not born, which I couldn't agree with more. Um, I'm loving a session to meet fellow leaders in the industry. And again, yeah, please contribute to the discussion and keep networking. And I just want to react to all the good more comments. So, um, and we've got awesome Clem on the line. Clem is a great man who's right behind women's empowerment. So Clem, there you go. You're a, we'll call you a women's, a women's empowerment bro. We're a bro for women's empowerment. There you go. So love your work, Clem. It's good. I lo love seeing um, men here support women's empowerment. Now, speaking about empowerment, it is Anya Lude Milliner time. And Anya 
you have been so amazing today. I'd love to hear your thoughts and reactions to what you've seen so far. Well, it has been truly great conversation and it's been really um, interesting to hear what everyone has to say. And uh, I'm pretty much on board with uh, what the ladies have said earlier. And um, another point, I guess, what came up for me that I remember that I read a research um, that said that maybe even men, um, hereditary might have more resilience than them. But as we both, as women and men age, women tend to have more resilience than men. Uh, and I think one of the factors that Labor. could be contributing to that would be men's um, male men not being willing to talk Mm -hmm. about things that might show them um, vulnerable or fragile. Um, So I think it's one of the factors that might actually um, play against them. Whereas, yes, as uh, the lady said before, we like to talk, we like to share, we like to express. And I think that has a lot of healing power when we do that because we don't sort of cram it up or cram it down and uh, we don't bottle it up. We express it. Um, we express our feelings and then we let go of it. So that's, um, that's one of my thoughts. And I also agree that um, there's a lot of expectations probably um, created by media and placed on women uh, by women um, that women can have it all. Yeah. You know, I need to do it all and uh, need to have more masculine ma- energy in them and nourish that energy um, within us. Um, yet I think that sometimes that can be quite burdensome and sometimes it can uh, lead to um, some possible health issues because, you know, a woman has to perform at the same rate as, uh, as men. Yeah. And I know I've spoken about this topic and I know a lot of you ladies um, and gents, we've spoken about this topic before. It's the whole situation of, you know, women on women's sexism. And um, I've actually been do- I'm actually about to do a poll on this topic, which I'm very fascinated about. But I hear so many women say to me, Edward, men are supporting me. It's other women tearing me down. And it's this. And again, and I've seen this as well. I've seen so many women tear other women down. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here. What are your thoughts on that topic, Anya? Uh, Yes, I've seen that happening. Uh, Or women, uh, let's put it this way, women um, would not support other women um, as easily and eagerly or not necessarily, you know, as um, men would support each other, I would say. And, yes, I'd say one of the reasons that would be maybe uh, perception or of potential competition in one area or the other, particularly you could see it in the workplace when if women work together and there could be some uh, hidden rivalry and competition going on and, um, yes, the backstabbing as a result. Yes, it is possible, but it's not necessarily that it has to be, um, that it takes place everywhere you go. But, yes, it's certainly um it, it, it does happen. Uh, incredible. And I was going to ask you as well, what are your thoughts for women bouncing back for rock bottom? What are your thoughts and advice from that viewpoint? Um, well, okay. So whatever the situation is, and I know, so, but, you know, Sonia shared her you know, story and you think, oh, my God, you know, so many things uh, happen all at once within such a short amount of time. And it's very difficult to cope. So I guess t- take one take one day at a time. Uh, trust that um, that pain is temporary. That everything changes, and trust in yourself. And uh, I guess make self care as a priority, particularly through the healing phase. And also remember that you have power. You have choice to make a decision and to move forward. And things will change because a lot of people, I guess, when they go through difficult times, yes, they think it's the end of them, as Agnes said, uh, or they have a belief that they're broken, yet that they're not broken. But they need that time and space to realize it, that everything uh, that happened has a blessing and a gift for them. They just need to see it. And that can take a little bit of time to notice. 
Anya. Incredible as always. Can we give a round of applause to Amazing Anya? Thank I was going to say, keep the discussions going. We've got some great contributions here. I'm just going to quickly scan through a few things. Uh, Chris, um, Camilla has made some amazing good points talking about uh, expectations versus natural tendency. And um, we're going on to talk about women being competitive with each other. And Chris Miller talks about the queen bee syndrome. I've never heard that Chris Miller, but spot on. That explains it well. And Leanne Wakeling also talks about how connection is easier for women uh, compared to men. I couldn't agree with that one more. And just scanning through the comments. Um, great one from Lynette. I don't see a change really happening in society, but at least women are better at nurturing than men, which I couldn't agree with more. And we're talking more about um, the queen bee and women being frightened. And um, yeah, it's insane. So there you go. So Anya, love your contributions. And Master Coach Sonia, what are your thoughts and reactions to what you've heard so far? Um, I, I think it's uh, great how we have all... Um, one shared and been open to um, share on this platform as well as um, the steps that, you know, that we, I think the steps that we took to recover would probably be something else that we could share, you know, um, to help others on how we got back to that. And Anya reminded me, um, that, you know, there was so much pain that, you know, when you're going through something traumatic at the time, that it's, it's all you can do is just get up out of bed just to get dressed and feed yourself and just do the basic things. But, you know, that's a win. You know, if you can just do those things and take care of yourself and, and, you know, too, is about self-love. You know, when we are faced with adversity, you know, we can either stand in our greatness and battle it, or we can, you know, we can recoil and let it defeat us. But if we stand in our greatness and, and our character will, um, it will come full force and that's when we will be able to face it because that is when our true colors come out because we will be able to um fight whatever is coming toward us or around us or in us it's like that fight flight or freeze you know um when you're going through like ptsd or trauma yeah. um you know you you might need outside help to help you um, you know, sort through the, the mind, you know, the mind on how to stop your mind from running away like a train, but, you know, it's, it's about how much you love yourself and, and not doubting your, your abilities and know that, you know, you have the, you have your heart, you know, that can be full of love and you can get rid of that hate. You have your mind that you have all of this knowledge that you can use to help you make uh, action plan to steps to get out of that situation. You have your body to help you move to, um, you know, get those endorphins up to help you um, get out of that state of mind. You know, you have your support circle that you can reach out to, to help you, um, get out of that bad place. It's just all about taking that first step and not being afraid to do that. And, you know, I, I, I think that the recovery part sometimes can be the hardest um, because I know that during COVID, I didn't want to go out of the house. I didn't want to be seen because I was afraid of not COVID, I was afraid of a bully or I was afraid of a toxicity or I was afraid of someone being mean to me. And, and so, you know, I had to overcome that. And I did that by going out and speaking at an event with, you know, women leaders. I, I spoke on personal branding and I was nervous as all get out on the inside, but I had the confidence that I could do it. 
and my friend that came as my support, she said, you delivered it like a conversation. No one, I, I couldn't tell you were nervous. And I said, well, thank God, because I was nervous as all get out on the inside. But that was my challenge to do it. And so I think, you know, we have to, you know, really stay mindful every single day to, um, you know, like, like uh, knowing what our intentions are and to stay in the, in the moment. And, and, uh, you know, I, I started, um, journaling again and, uh, I was listening to this podcast where it's about mindset and it's like, every time you have a negative thought or a thought that you, you, I call it trash talk in your head, write it down and turn it into a positive, do it for 30 days. So that way, in that 30 days, you can see how far you have come and you can, you can reprogram your subconscious because that's who needs to be fed. Your conscious is your ego. And that's going to, that's is what is stopping you. But your subconscious is what, if we reprogram it, is going to help um, get you where you need to be. Absolutely brilliant. Well said. Round of applause to you, Sonia. I just want to acknowledge we have gone a bit over time, but I had to let it go because the conversations have been so good. What we're going to do is we're going to go into closing thoughts now. And um, Tasia, I want to bounce over to you for your closing thoughts. What's your advice to women, empowerment, and everything going forward? Thank you so much, Edward. It's been wonderful to be with you all today. And I love all these incredibly strong, powerful women coming together uh, to support each other. And Clem, I love that you're here to support women along with Edward. So that's what we need is when our men are supporting a women and not just by ourselves. And I would just love to say that the theme has been, again, it's so much about self-talk, self-awareness, self-love. And from that, we so much good can happen. Um, I wanted to offer that I have something, a tool for that, because not only am I a, a a coach, a confidence coach and a speaker, but I created um, an affirmation meditation app called Haven Guided Affirmations. It's completely free and it is a tool of self-kindness uh, that we can learn to speak this language of self-love, which again is a foreign language for many of us by practicing it. So I just wanted to offer this tool, Haven Guided Affirmations, so that you can start on a daily basis to uh, update the software, right? Because it is an ongoing thing. I love that Master Coach Sonia said, writing it down. Yes, write down the negative thoughts. And then what's the new affirmation? What's the new affirmation? What's going to serve me and my children and my family and my husband and my goals and my passion? We can be anything we want to be, but we have to be the ones to do it for ourselves. We have to start with our own self. We have to give great voice to ourselves. To give great voice means to move, touch, and impact. We have the ability to do that first to ourselves, and then we have the bandwidth to do it for others. So I want to implore you, as of today, to be aware of your thoughts, notice them, and if they are not serving you, rewrite them, revoice them with conviction and consistency, because whatever you say after I am or I have with consistency and conviction tells your future. So what do you want your future to be? You get to decide by how you speak to yourself, the thoughts you think, and the ability to be aware to reprogram them. And it's an ongoing basis. I support you. I believe in you. You are amazing. And I'm so delighted that I had a chance to share this today. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Oh my God, Tasia, just amazing and beautiful. Anya? Love to bounce over to you to hear your closing thoughts. Yeah, it was a great uh, finishing thought from Tasia. Thank you very much for sharing it. Yes. So, again, for finishing on the positive note, I think that when we hit low points, it's a great opportunity for us to reinvent ourselves, really. It's a great opportunity for our mental, emotional, and spiritual rebirth. And to see it in that light uh, can give us already, uh, can give us strength and 
trust ourselves and trust that it all will be okay if we keep going the best way we can with what we have at that moment. God. Dangerous and powerful, Anya. Thank Love you. your work. And, of course, the final, final thought goes to Master Coach Sonia today. You get the final, final thought. What's your final, final closing thoughts, uh, Sonia? Um, I would just like to say one thank you to all the ladies for, um, you know, being here and for sharing. It's been very enlightening. And um, I, um, I too have a, a self-empowerment guide that I'd love to share. And it, it also has um, tips on how to, for self-care and how to uh, be more self-empowered and to write down what your, you know, your gratitude and your affirmation. And it's got some quotes in there for you. And, um, you know, I would love for us to, you know, definitely connect on LinkedIn and, and, you know, help build each other up when, you know, have a word that if we are feeling down or we need encouragement, you know, reach out, you know, because we can be there for each other, no matter where we're at in the world. We're only, you know, we're, we're fingertip or keyboard away to reach out and help. So, you know, please connect because um, we, one of the things that I have said, I'm working on a course called Embrace Your Empowered Self. And I think that speaks volumes because that's what we need to do is really embrace who we are and, and own it. Beautiful round of applause to yourself, Master uh, Coach Sonia, and round of applause to all you winners as well, and thank you for being part of it. So what we're going to do is we've gone a bit over time. I let it happen because the contributions are so amazing. I couldn't cut them short. So just to let you know, it is being recorded. To our people who came on live, thank you. To our panellists, thank you. And to those who watch the recording, you're awesome. See you all next time. And can we please all unmute and give the amazing panelists and ladies and gentlemen a round of applause. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, Edward. Thank you, everyone.